ketchup. Is it a year or the study? How long is it? Uh, so the, um, sorry, <laughs> I won't yell at you. Um, the Empower study is 12 months. So our patient-centered taper goes for 12 months, and we do not mandate zero opioids. It's open-ended. We basically partner with patients, and we tell them we're going to help you get to your lowest comfortable dose over one year. Um, we're hoping that people reduce by at least 50% over a year, and our previous methods suggest that that may be achievable. Um, but we actually don't know. The evidence doesn't exist, and so that's what we aim to collect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Kim. Um, thank you for your rigorous and compassionate approach to this problem with your work. Uh, my question is, this is such a powerful presentation, and it's, uh, this legacy issue is not well articulated in the literature. So my question is, Correct. have you published essentially what you just told us in an editorial <sighs> okay so that's a great uh, that's a great question um, you know the best evidence right now in this legacy population is really my study but again it doesn't directly apply because it was a voluntary study so so my evidence um, informs how to best taper when patients are on board. How do we do that best? But um, you know, in terms of your your point, it, you know, is there an editorial on this topic? Um, I actually submitted one to JAMA Internal Medicine last week. Um, it was not accepted in the medical journal, um, but I have crafted a letter specifically on this issue of um, the risks associated with um, forced tapering and specifically very aggressive tapers. And we are getting sign-on from major national agencies, international pain groups, multiple individuals, and um, we'll be circulating that. Um, you know, I'm here speaking to the board and, and really advocating for careful and compassionate measures. Um, this also needs to be put forward for other states and other boards as well, um, because there is there is a poor appreciation for what's at stake. And I you know I recognize that people are trying to bring forward solutions, and the intention of that um, is you know there, it's well intended, but there are unintended consequences that need to be appreciated. And methods matter. McPherson's, um, they published this year the VA study where they looked at mandatory um, and voluntary and mandatory tapers to zero, and they found good results. So, how, do you have any comments on that? There has been secondary data analysis on the VA data that has really brought forward. I was mentioning the director of the VA has put forward new data um, describing the risks that are not well appreciated at the sort of the aggregated level. So this is the problem with research is that when we just look at means and averages and odd, ratio, odd ratios, we miss the edge conditions or the tails where people are really suffering. And this is what we need to appreciate and we need to put measures in place to protect these vulnerable patients. So um, it's really taking a look at the individual because opioid tapering is certainly right for some patients, but it's not right for everyone. So um, I, you know, I was just really convinced when the director of the VA said we're seeing increased risks in these patient populations, um, both for harms and also increased suicides, and this must be taken very seriously. Thank you so much, Dr. Jordan, for coming up here and presenting such a stunning uh, compilation of information, very useful. Um, I have specific um, questions since this is a, a body that is working to establish policy, yeah. um, and, and um, I, you may not be able to answer this right now, and we can certainly welcome your input later, but if you can give recommenda specific recommendations um, in, in particular, what would um, what your thank you um, uh, guidelines would be for defining a legacy patient? And, yes, because um, I think that's probably critical, and also sure. recommendations that you might have in 
uh, communities where there is an absence of appropriate non-pharmacological care or, or an absence of adequate non-pharmacological care? Yeah, and I'd be happy to. I don't, I don't want to. I don't know how much time I have to answer questions. Um, so, but I would be happy to answer those questions. I can even put that in something of a report for the board, if you would like. Um, we have taken all of these um, considerations into account in our own study methods, and I feel that um, your request for information is, is very doable, and I'd be pleased to put that together for you. I think, you know, one of the things that's not appreciated in the United States is that almost 18 million Americans are taking long-term prescription opioids now, and this really requires um, special considerations. It's really distinct from whether or not we should start opioids or continue opioids after surgery. This is a particular segment of the population, and um, we, we really need to be very thoughtful and careful, and I would be honored to be even part of the solution or just providing information to you that would be useful. 